Newport Police is a very unique and interesting police department. The mission is uh, to protect the trade and commerce, the visitors that come into the port on an annual basis. It's a 24 hour, seven day a week operation. It uses uh, various forms of traditional policing and some non-traditional security uh, measures. There's a lot of dynamic information that happens in public safety. Uh, all the situations that the officers respond to are very dynamic because no two are the same. Uh, they might be on a traffic stop uh, one moment, they might be at a family dispute another moment, it could be a vessel stop out in the main channel and of course Southern California obviously is famous for, for our pursuits and some of the other activities that we have. I'm very proud of what we're doing uh, in the way of technology but I also see the need for us to be very open minded and to keep an open platform when it comes to our technology, our use of data, our geospatial uh, technology being right at the top of that list. Uh, I, think, I think that there's things that we can be uh, integrating into our, our basic daily platforms uh, when it comes to information and call taking all the way out through the deployment of resources. During the course of the day, the port's very active, very dynamic. You have the large container ships coming in, they're bringing in goods that are going to be situated throughout the entire continental United States. Uh, you have small pleasure craft, uh, we're one of the unique ports where we have uh, recreational and pleasure boats that are interacting in an environment where we have an industrial complex, where we have trade and shipping going on at the same time. The ability to monitor all of that, to monitor all of that activity uh, that's going on in a very dynamic and sometimes dangerous environment is important. The ports had somewhat of a convergence of needs in the GIS area. Of course, when we started to implement a very robust uh, security system, one of the things that we wanted to do is have a number of layers of GIS on top of that. This whole idea of managing the work, managing the tasks, having task orders in the computers. So GIS came in about the same time as we were doing a, a computer assisted CMMS system or, or maintenance management system. So that was really the appropriate time for us to also look at how GIS could be integrated into the maintenance management system. So the great thing about the GIS system is it serviced the needs of at least four different groups in the port at the same time, so it was perfect. We went with the enterprise approach um, because it was the best for our department. We had a lot of silo systems, uh, a lot of silo GIS data, and every division seemed to have their own, or a few different divisions had their own GIS data and they were all holding the same data, but it was different because it, they weren't communicating. Having an enterprise approach, we were able to bring everything together and figure out you know, what is the newest data and uh, what's the credible data. And then um, everybody can still utilize that data, but there's one place for them to get it. GIS is going to prove equally as valuable for our maintenance department because we exist in a port environment. If our terminals don't run, then we don't make money. So we make money by moving containers across the docks. So if we have something like a buried electrical, which is not an unusual thing where we have a problem with that, locating it rapidly, fixing the problem rapidly, things that GIS are going to help us do, those are going to be critical to our success as a port. Because our customers, the one thing they want to do is they want to keep the machine running all the time. They want to be able to move cargo 24 hours a day. We've had some instances where we were able to uh, respond to some emergencies in the field. And based upon the data, uh, the first responders are able to look at the initial data that comes in. And if it's important for them to drill down and get further layers as far as wind conditions, weather conditions, arrival of other assets that are coming on, on scene, estimated time of arrival, and really uh, define what our working periods are, we have been able to do that like no other time in our history. It's really helped in the way of making sure that our data management uh, is up to date and, and that we have credited data that, we're, data that we're sending out to the community or using um, with our, our executives are using so that we can stand behind the GIS data that we're using. We see GIS being hugely important in the future of the port. So I want to know myself how things fit together as opposed to being one of the guys that says, I don't really know much about it myself, but these guys know how it fits together. My expectation is that uh, I'm gonna get smarter on GIS and then help educate some of my fellow managers at the port on it. There's been a big push for us to communicate better, uh, not only at the regional level, but also at the national level. 
Um, we're now moving in the direction of geospatial technology and, and the ability to send uh, critical mapping data and uh, layers of, of topography that we've never been able to do before to give the people on the viewing end the best viewpoint, the, the best understanding of what's being dealt with in the field. We need to do more of that. Going forward into the future, uh, it not only needs to be something that's just being done here at the Port of LA, but it needs to expand. It needs to be something that we're doing throughout our industry, throughout the transportation enterprise, certainly with public safety. And then there's that one other component that I always talk about. That's the first affected, whether they're members of the community or the labor force, whether the thousands of truckers or uh, rail operators that uh, operate in our community, it's whenever we're able to integrate them into this picture. It's gonna enhance security, it's going to enhance public confidence and public safety.